Hi my Swooners, I hope you're having a great month, week or day and that positivity is coming your way. For this week's video, I wanted to showcase some bite-sized romances that I think are perfect for Halloween and to get you into the Halloween spirit. I love October, I love autumn, the leaves changing, the outfits and I also love Halloween, the spookiness of it all, the watching horror movies and all of it. I just I absolutely love October and so during the month of October I try and read as many books that basically gets me in the Halloween feel um, from the very beginning of October as well I don't believe in like oh you should wait like a week before Halloween no 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 the first of October I am already reading books that will get me into that um, Halloween spooky feel so it usually consists of monster romances or witches, vampires, werewolves, you know, the, the OG three that people usually think of when they think of Halloween. Um, I also read about, I also read orc romances and um, demons and just that whole genre. If there's romance in it and it has a monster or something frantical, I will read that during October and so I have recently read a bunch of Bicer's romances that really just got me in the Halloween feel and I thought I would share that in this video. Now when I mean bite-sized romances I basically mean romance no novellas that are under 150 pages and that you can read in just an hour or two. I really like novellas I know some people it's a hit and miss because some people argue that you can't really get into the story. Um, with just a novella like you can't get into the story with such a short amount of pages whilst others just really like it because you can read more stories i'm actually very much in the middle of that i understand both sides but for me the reasons why i love novellas is because when i'm going to bed and i only have an hour before i have to go to bed because i have work tomorrow a novella is really good at just sort of scratching that itch that I have to read um because you don't want to start like a 400 page book or at least in my opinion I don't want to start a 400 page book before I go to bed because then I'll be up until 4am trying to finish it so novellas are just like a nice little thing to read here and there and so I've been reading a lot of them this month and these are some that I just really enjoyed so Let's get started. So the first book that I'm going to discuss today is Riding the Headless Horseman by Molly Likovich. This novella is 53 pages long and I know, I know some people are probably thinking 53 pages, what kind of story is that? But there's actually a story in it and it's, it was actually really interesting. You have Arletta Harrington. She's a witch in this small town and one day when she is closing up her shop on Halloween, she gets kidnapped by the headless horseman who she originally never believed in everyone in town is always talking about the headless horseman and how he takes people away and she just always thought it was just a myth and then she gets kidnapped by him and she's like oh you're real ah interesting the headless horseman has it in his head and he's actually quite determined and truly believes that our girl is his one true love and they are destined to be together. Now, whilst our letter is like, eh, Bob, uh, I don't really believe that. In this short book, there's a lot of spice, a lot of physical touch, a lot of communication with bodies and soon things start to develop. Now, whilst this book is only 53 pages, I really liked how Molly ensured that you knew the background of the Headless Horseman and there was actually sort of a small character development with Arletta. Like she generally just didn't believe in death. She was actually kind of cynical as well when it comes to love. And so you see like a small character arc in such a small book. And I also... For me, I think the biggest thing that I loved about this book or the thing that I really remember reading is at first I was like, okay, this is, this is just a spicy read. All right. But then the last couple of chapters really had me hooked. 
when you find out the headless horseman's story and then the last couple of chapters comes in i really found myself sitting there thinking okay i really need to i really want to finish this i really need to find out what's going to happen are they going to be together what's will they have their happily ever after and even though it was only 53 pages it and it was so short i actually ended up really loving the couple in the end and i think that's a real testament to the writing and the storytelling because i rooted for the couple i was so happy for them i really wanted them to be together and i think that's a real testament like i said to her writing and the story so riding the headless horseman for me thumbs up great book so the next book that i'll be talking about is wickedly sweet by steph macca this book is only 73 pages and <sighs> mm. let's just get into it okay <laughs> let's just get into it okay so wickedly sweet centers around audrey now audrey has just had a terrible breakup with her boyfriend as she discovers him cheating with the girl he told her not to worry about and stuff like that anyway she somehow managed to get on her brother's trip to to salem audrey's really into halloween and horror and she just feels like going to salem for this half term break would be a great distraction and she's just gonna have a lot of fun now she's just there to forget about her ex join the witch hunt that the town does and her brother's best friends Brax and nate really want to help her with that fun if you know if you get my drift i mean it's a spicy read this book is a reverse harem brother's best friends not just one and it's it's really really spicy okay i'm just it's really spicy if you want a quick spicy read this is the book i liked Wick wickedly sweet i really enjoyed the book because um for me with reverse harms it's always been a bit of a hit and miss i always think there's one person in the reverse harm that the heroine leans more towards and so it's just like a weird dynamic there it's a bit weird um it was a bit biased but i must admit in this book both of the men brax and nate got equal amount of time in my opinion and they really do like audrey like from the very beginning from the very first page where she is sitting in the car with her brother and her brother's going off being like oh you ruined our trip yada yada, yada blah 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 wine 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 the best friends come to her defense and you can just tell that they are feeling her that they are not only protective of her but do like her and so after a night of drinking where audrey starts talking about all the things she would like in a relationship it's not surprising that they're like we can give it to you we will give it to you because from the very beginning you could tell that they were feeling her i really liked wickedly sweet the one thing i do have to say is it does have a miscommunication trope even though it's quickly fixed um that's the reason why i couldn't give it like full five stars i ended up giving it a four stars because i absolutely despise the miscommunication trope i think it is so annoying and even then i thought it was so annoying whilst reading it as well because the entire time all i kept on thinking was just talk to them like how is it that you can't talk to them um <laughs> Overall, Wickedly Sweet is a short, spicy read that I really enjoyed. I loved the heroine. I loved both of the romantic leads. And it had plenty of funny moments as well as spicy moments. So if you want to read under, if you want a book to read under half an hour or like an hour, this is the book. Yeah. Then the next book on this list is Burn for Jack by Aidan Pierce. This book has 93 pages and personally this was one of my favorite reads this was one of my favorite reads that i have read so far in october 
So, Burn for Jack is centered around um, Ada. Yeah, Ada, who is living in this small town where she is constantly being picked on and bullied and just treated disrespectfully by her classmates due to her family legacy. Now, her family legacy is that centuries ago, literally centuries ago, one of her ancestors was burned as a witch with her lover, Jack. And Jack, whilst they were being burned, made a deal with the devil to save her life and ensure that her soul lives. Now, because of this legacy and because of the town's prejudiceness and just everything, my girl goes through it. Like, she literally goes through it. And on the graduation day, her entire class is going to the pumpkin patch. Now, she has been told not, never to go to the pumpkin patch. Like, do not go there because bad things happen to her family, like her lineage when they go there because her grandmother went there and came back crazy, apparently. But she decides to go because she's trying to win a bet against one of her bullies who says, look, if you stay and do all the rest of it and dress up like your ancestor on this night and stay in the pumpkin patch, we'll give you 200 quid. And all she's thinking is if I get this 200 quid, I can go. But what she is not expecting is Jack to appear. Now, Jack is the headless horseman and all he wants is to reconnect with his one true love. And that's that's where the story begins. And oh, that's where the story like starts. What I really loved about Burn for Jack was the fact that the author really focused on the backstory. So there's like, I think a whole chapter where we really dive into the story of Jack and his one true love and what he did and how the town sort has sort of twisted that tale to make it seem like they were in the wrong and they were doing stuff that was wrong and that was the reason why they got burned. When in actuality, our girl turns around and goes, no, because this is the way our family says it. And the way she says it it's a love story it's a beautiful love story that ends in a very that has a tragic ending i there were so many tropes in this book that just hit so for example jack was very much you touch her you die um you upset her you die i will kill anyone to protect her like he was very much like mess with my girl and find out like if you cross her, you cross me. You know what I mean? Like that is literally what he was about. And I I really liked that because our girl just doesn't have anyone. Like we see that in her family is very dysfunctional. She doesn't have anyone. So when Jack comes around, he, he's like, you now have me. And I just, I loved that. I loved the story. Um, I will say this, um, a slight warning. I have some, I have seen some people say that some of the side characters were quite stereotypical and superficial. Like the bully is literally the bully. Like it's 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 very much this is what a bully would be like. Like it's it's not complicated. It's think of a bully from like a TV show, like a kids TV show that you used to watch. That's him that's like the whole group you have like the bully the one that always gets picked on in the group bully group it's very like superficial the side characters but i for me personally what makes up for that is the fact that the two main characters have some level of depth um and their romance really did steal the show in my opinion i just at one point I was like, oh, I don't really care about the side characters. I want to know what's going to happen to our our leads. Like, what's going to happen to them? Because they've been they've both been through so much. Is this going to be a happy ever after? Is this going to be a tragic ending? What? So, overall, for a book that is under 100 pages, Burn for Jack had me hooked. And it definitely packed a punch. And it hit all of the tropes I like. Like, you know, it hit, it hit all of the tropes and I really enjoyed the two main characters 
at as well so for me this book was a hit and i think a lot of people will enjoy it so then we have the dalwick demon by ashley bennett which is only 110 pages now i'm a huge ashley bennett fan i'm also signed up to her patreon as well i've basically read nearly all of her books um and i saved this book for october and it didn't disappoint so you got my girl iris now iris has been through a lot in her life like she's been through a lot she's on hard times and now she's having to sell her body to survive and one day when she's doing this the town basically picks her up and i mean literally the town um the townspeople and the church pick her up and say you are being thrown into the hole as a sacrifice for the dalwick demon yeah they accuse her of like prostitution and witchcraft which is just whatever basically what they want to do they need a sacrifice and they've chosen her she's begging them not to do it they chuck her in and what she finds is she lands on like a really comfortable bed of leaves and she's like she's scared but she's also thinking huh this is a bit interesting and that's when she meets the dalwick demon now selvin whilst he is a demon his job isn't actually to eat the humans but rather he protects them he takes all of the sacrifices and takes them to a land where they will be safe and they will be away from prejudice and from the people who threw them down there to begin with this is his this has been his job for centuries he lives in isolation in this really dark cave and all he does is take these sacrifices to a safe place that's literally all he does however with iris he can't help but notice how pretty she is and how kind she is and iris can't help but fall in love with this demon who's eager to please and eager to help so even though they have this connection there's also an element that's standing in the way which is the fact that selvin feels like it's his duty to stay in the cave and make sure the sacrifices are safe so throughout the journey of them making it out of this cave because the just a side note the cave is underneath a mountain as well so it's like it's a hole and then you've got this cave and it's underneath the mountain so it takes it takes like a couple of days to get out from underneath it and go to this land so during those couple of days where they are traveling they connect and the question is will salvin finally get, leave this cage and find happiness with iris or will he stay because he believes this is his duty ashley bennett has a way of making heroes that automatically just go on my book boyfriend list like it's just ridiculous at this point i don't know what she puts inside her books or why i'm so addicted to her book <laughs> to her heroes but i am because Salvin stole my heart. He he stole my heart and it's, it, he did it so quickly as well because he was just so loving and so eager to please and he just really wanted to help and he was so patient as well with Iris because Iris has been through a lot and so he was just and he had such like a sad backstory as well. Again, like with all these books whilst they're short this book did pack a punch there was emo there was a lot of emotions i was feeling like i was happy for them but then i was also really sad that they were in this predicament and the spice was up there the spice was there Just, mm, mm. but whilst also the love language of physical touch was there there was also the love language of acts of service which i really enjoyed because Southern just wanted to make sure that iris was okay throughout the entire book that was his one priority making sure that she was okay that she was healing and that she would be safe and for iris this is the first time anyone has ever done that for her so she's 
I understood why Iris fell for him so quickly because I was like, girl, I would fall for him too. I would fall for him too. Like, come on. He, it was honestly, he was a great hero. And then when it comes to Iris, I loved her. I loved how understanding she was, how even though she had been through so much, she didn't let that stop her from feeling the way that she was feeling and sort of having a guard up. Instead, it really sort of pushed her to actually accept the kindness and accept everything. And I really enjoyed that as well. Like I thought that was amazing. Also the side characters in this hit, even though there's not a lot of people in this story, the side characters were amazing. Overall, I just loved this book. This book was a five star for me. It was one of my five stars so far in this month. And it really just, it hit all the spots. It had the spice, it had the romance, and it had amazing main characters. And I really enjoyed the storyline and the lore of the world as well. With, I will say this with all the books I've mentioned, the authors really do know how to put bits of the background and the history of this story in the book without it basically making the book longer of like not a novella anymore you're not going to get 200 pages of just pure backstory when you read this but you will walk away being like oh i know the reason why this happens and i know the reason or how this happens or i know about how they became friends and the rest of it and it's all just little sentences here and there and conversations here and there and I think that really just makes the book and makes the world so I've got to do a shout out to that because they didn't just turn around and say okay figure it out figure out this world figure out this law figure out like we don't really need to discuss it all of these authors said okay and we're going to give you like a bit here 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 and here and that really did help just encompassing the world and making the story so i have to give a shout out to that and the last book that i'm mentioning is orc me baby one more time by ava ross this book is 115 pages so this is the longest one that i'm recommending and this is another five star because mm, i just love this book okay you have riley and gunner now our girl has been crushing on gunner the orc who owns a blacksmith's shop since the moment she saw him and it's actually quite cute because from the very beginning you find out that she has been basically going to his shop and asking for skewers for her barbecue set to be made every day for like the past couple of months even years um <laughs> but What's also really cute is you find out that she has so many now that she just has like a drawer full of his work. But Gunner isn't complaining because he also really likes Riley. Like he really likes her. The only problem is, is that he has a bit of self-esteem issues because he wasn't born an orc. He actually was transformed into one. And so he doesn't know if Riley likes that whilst Riley is just there like you are my type <laughs> anyway our girl gets a phone call from her mom basically saying look I'm gonna set you up with someone for your grandmother's big birthday bash and our girl's like no way I don't want to be set up I'm already found the love of my life I just need to make a move I don't want to do it so she lies she tells her mom that she has a boyfriend and then she asks Gunnar if he could pretend. And Gunnar, wanting to just spend time with her, says yes. And that's how, that's how this book hit me, like hooked me. I'm not even joking. That's how this book hooked me because it is a fake dating monster romance and orcs plus mutual pining, come on come on how many tropes can you have in a book like this book had all of my favorite tropes in it like honestly it had all of my favorite tropes and it didn't hurt that i really enjoyed both of the main characters and the side characters shout out to the grandmother because the grandmother in this book 
was hilarious. She was so funny. I genuinely could not stop myself laughing whenever she showed up to a scene. Like, she was actually, she was jokes. She was just jokes. I mean, <laughs> the woman was crazy. <laughs> But I just really, I think for me, what really hit, hit, or what I really enjoyed about this book was the fact that whilst you have this element of mutual pining, the author also touches on the fact that Gunnar has self-esteem issues. He doesn't, he doesn't really have a lot of self-confidence when it comes to pursuing Riley and wanting to be with her. Um, and I think that's the main issue with this like the the kind of off balance because of it because i will say this the reason why i got a four instead of a five was because there was a miscommunication trope yet again i'm telling you i'm really sick and tired of this trope because whilst they both liked each other they never really spoke about their feelings until the very end you know like they were doing stuff, they were fake dating, they were doing all the rest of it. But the entire time, I kept on like thinking after every chapter, have you guys had that talk yet? Like, have you guys talked about what you are? Have you guys defined the relationship already? Because you guys are moving like you're dating without actually talking about your dating and you haven't confessed your feelings to each other at all. And I can just feel the miscommunication coming up. And then when it did come up, I was annoyed because I was like, this communication bit. Or like this scene doesn't make sense in my opinion um i remember frowning and being like sort this out quickly which it was it was sorted out in the next chapter but i still generally was just a little bit mm. but other than that the book was really good like it had its jokes it had its funny moments it had that element of mutual pining where because it was dual pov you saw how much each of the characters really wanted to be together and admired each other and loved each other like Riley was obsessed with him she was just like this orc is my person we are meant to be together end of discussion um which I really again was very cute and it was nice to read overall this book was very cute it had so many cute moments and bits where you will well where i just turned around and said like oh that is so cute <laughs> maybe one day angelis you know like just having that those type of moments in between the spice that hit there was a lot of spice in it these two when they said fake dating the moment they put their hands on each other it was like they couldn't get enough of each other um which was understandable because they have been in love with each other for time so <laughs> this book had everything overall it had everything it was funny it was cute it was spicy and it's a book that you can read in like two hours so so that is it i will list all of the books i mentioned down below if you have any novellas that you think i will enjoy please let me know i'm always down to add more novellas into my tbr because they are nice little bite-sized romances to read before i go to bed um i hope you really enjoyed this video and if you have read any of the books that i've mentioned um and you didn't like them or you loved them or you just didn't see the hype about them again comment down below because i love hearing other people's opinions I, yeah, I just love hearing other people's opinions. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week for another Timeless Swoons video. Bye.